Welcome to Pushing Forward with Alicia, a podcast that gives disability a voice. Each week, we will explore topics like confidence, ambition, resilience, and finding success against all odds. We are creating a collective community that believes that all things are possible for all people. Open hearts, clear paths, let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pushing Forward with Alicia. I'm very excited about today. My sister Karina is back, Woo! and I have a really extra special guest. Before I introduce her, this show today is going to be on parenting and blended families and the challenges, the good, the bad, raising a household full of kids, one being a, a kid with a disability. How was that? So, we're going to talk about specifically motherhood. My beautiful stepmother, my mama, Lisa is on with us. And before I let her jump in and we start kind of diving into our story together. So my mother passed away when I was really young, seven years old. My siblings and I have had a beautiful story of a blended family throughout the entire journey. I think it's really important as I'm sharing my path and my story to introduce some of the women that have shaped me in being who I am that have been extremely impactful and have filled some shoes that were left behind with my mom's absence. My stepmother, my mom, Lisa, she was highly important in growing up from a little girl into a teenager, into a woman and and kind of finding my wheels forward in life, finding ways she become a strong woman. She's very strong and determined. And you're going to learn that as she shares her story with you. And I found this quote that reminded me of how my mama Lisa always made me feel as a little girl. And this quote was, I wouldn't change you for the world, but I would change the world for you. So I'm really excited to introduce her and into this conversation and give her the stage and the light that she deserves. Mama Lisa, thank you for your time and space today. Welcome to Pushing Forward. So glad to be here. Before we get to parenting, I think we need to start in the beginning. Maybe you can lay down the framework of how the paths have crossed in our lives that we were so blessed to become a family. Do you want to talk about that a little bit and share? Well, I'm going back to June of 1979. I started being a legal secretary the same day that your father started being an attorney. And again, it was June of 1979 with a firm that had offices in Garden Grove and Thousand Oaks. And on your dad's first day, he came in with your mom and you and Regina and showed off his office. And then he introduced the whole family to everybody that was there. And it was, it was so cute. You're such a nice family. Um, Unfortunately, the firm dissolved about a few years afterwards. And I think it was in 1982 when I went to work for your dad part-time and Often your mom and your granny, Rose, would come in after having lunch, and it was so nice to see everybody. And shortly after that, they tried so hard to have a boy, and they they, I remember Pete telling me that they got a book. Mom, a book to choose the gender and how to get a boy or a girl, and they wanted uh, a boy. So they got Nicholas, which was really great. They tried the positions. <laughs> what a, what a tidbit. That's a tidbit, but really there was a book and, and your dad and mom wrote, <laughs> read it and got Nicholas. Wow. Um, unfortunately, shortly after Nicholas uh, was born, your mama got sick and it was 1983 when she lost her battle with, um, cancer at the city of hope. And it was sad. Your mom's funeral was the biggest funeral I've ever seen, Alicia. Oh my there gosh. were so many people there paying respect to her friends. And, and it was quite sad because your mama was 31. Anyway, it was too young. It was too young, but 
it, it was so good to see how many people came out to show their respect for your mom and your dad. And um, it was very, very touching. And it's something I don't think I will ever forget. Mm. I mean, it was, there were so many people. It was just beautiful. After that, I continued to, of course, work for your dad. And um, from time to time, he needed my help with like brownie parties for you guys. Cause he Aww. was like, like the Girl Scouts, there's all these brownies. Then I have to have a party. It's oh my God. And, and, and it, it, we lived in, Pla- or he lived, you guys lived in Placentia then. <laughs> and, um, and they had a central area where you could have parties. And he was he was so nervous. I think he was more nervous for the brownie parties than he was want, was for our wedding. <laughs> so, but it was fun. And you guys had such a good time. It was so cute. And, and I thought that was so neat of him to uh, do that for you guys. So I had, it was my pleasure to help your dad. And well, one thing led to another. And <laughs> And in 1985, we got married and moved from Placentia to uh, a house in Anaheim Hills. It was a one story. We were looking for a one story for you because it was so much easier for you to get around. And and that house fit the bill and we moved in there and we had so many fond memories in that house, so many parties. And, And it was just, it was a great house. One of the parties that I remember um, was your uh, baptism party. Karina and all of you got baptized at the same time. And we had a huge party. And at the time, your granny was a caterer, uh, the top four, her and her three friends. <laughs> And they came and brought all the food and catered the party. And it was such a good time. And um, just so many great memories, a a big Italian family. And I come from a big Italian family. And it was just so wonderful to have the holiday gatherings with so many people. And it was just so much fun. We had holiday gatherings. Your granny had Thanksgiving every year and tons. Everybody showed up to the Thanksgiving parties. And I remember standing out the sink for a good two hours, just washing the dishes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't have a dishwasher. She never did. She never did. No, but I, I did. And we, we surely we got a one. line. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we have a dishwasher, but granny didn't. And there was a line of people where I'd be washed, drying and putting things away. And it was so just fun. so much fun. Aunt Mary and your granny and, so fun. and gosh, everybody. It was just a wonderful time because there was tons of people. And that's just how you should have a family gathering with lots and lots of family. And it was, it was a great celebration. When you married Papa, how old were you when you were, where were you in your life when you were taking on what frankly seems to be quite a responsibility? (laughs) It was great. I got to say that I loved you guys. I mean, I just loved you guys. And, and it was a privilege for me to, to be able to take care of you and help your Papa with you guys and going through growing up. It was just, it was a, just a privilege. After my mom passed away, like I've always had, and this might be me like internalizing my own like ableism and stuff, but like I've always had a little bit of guilt that like Papa had to deal with a lot of the medical stuff that I had to go through, through my whole life. And I I know that you had a big role in that when you guys were married. Like I feel like, do you, can you speak to any of that? Like, do you remember how that affected him or you two or? It was stressful, but each surgery, Alicia, we felt that it was going to make your life easier for you. I mean, and it, and they were important surgeries. Also, your papa had a great support system. You had your Rose, your granny and Aunt Mary. We were always all together. I mean, I remember all of us waiting in the hospital rooms, you know, waiting for you to get out of your surgeries and things. Your biggest surgery, and I think the best surgery, the best procedure you had that really changed your life was the Coke pouch. And that happened in about, uh, I think it was 88, 89 that you had the Coke pouch. I was born with bladder incontinence. And I was born with only one good functioning kidney, which has been the hardship of my disability. It's been something that I've had to deal with lifelong. It was life changing for you. As it still is almost 35 years, 30 years later ish. You hear a lot about how 
having a kid with a disability is really hard on a marriage. And I was actually looking up a statistic. It's like they like 80 percent ish fail because of the stress of a lot of the layers that go into it. And I've always felt a little bit guilty that I put that like I could cry about right now. Let's take a quick break. You're listening to Pushing Forward with Alicia. We talk a lot on the show about ableism and inclusion. If you want to learn more, I invite you to listen to my TEDx talk, Disabling Ableism, the Modern Pathway to Inclusion. You can watch the whole speech on aliciaanderson.com. That's A-L-Y-C-I-A Anderson with an O.com. Click on speaking. Welcome back to Pushing Forward with Alicia. I'm very excited about today. My sister Karina is back and my beautiful stepmother, my mama Lisa is on with us. And I've always felt a little bit guilty that I put that, like I could cry about right now. Don't, don't. It wasn't that way. I I mean, I, I think maybe those statistics are for people that, um, maybe the real mom and dads that have been through so much together and, and they can be frustrated and at their wits end. But since I came in the picture after you were with us, I think I was, I was, I'm trying to think how old I was. I turned 26 the June after I got married. What I would like to say while we're having this conversation is a sincere heartfelt thank you for everything that you you did for me when I was a little girl that I needed without a mom. Like honestly, and you're right. Like I had a I had a crew of women, which was you and Granny and Aunt Mary and Aunt Carol that kind of were there to fill those gaps and those holes. And uh, I think I need therapy sometimes when I think about how I affected. I, I had to have just been really stressful. For like, do you know how you affected me? Alicia, I always thought of you. Okay, we're going to cry. You were my <laughs> hero. You were my hero. And I always thought, God, if she can do this and have her sister who looks just like her walk around and she can't, I knew that I could do whatever I uh-huh. had to do or put my mind to do because you were my hero. Well, thank you. I shouldn't feel bad about anything. One of my favorite things is was going to Disneyland with you. <laughs> we, we had to take you. I said, we have to take them out of school and go to Disneyland. And we did that a couple of times because you were our ticket to the front of the line. It was the best. <laughs> okay. And we got to park real close. I mean, we had front row parking and we got into the rides. Every time, like talk to parents out there that might be listening to this that have kids with disabilities. But I mean, it's, it's the, it's the mama reaction. It's the mama bear reaction. You want the best for your child. Always. It doesn't matter if they're disabled, you know, it, it, it's, you want the best for them. And I think as a parent with a disabled person, you just have to I mean, and I'm sure they're all they're always aware of the surroundings, but it's it 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 gives you purpose and it and you strive to make things easier for your child. But that's what a mama and a daddy would do for their child, it, it, uh, whether they're disabled or not. You always want the best and do and the best for them. Do do we want to touch on the entrance of Karina? Karina. She was born in May on uh, May 26, 1987. At what time? At 310 in the afternoon. She doesn't tell me happy birthday till after 310. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I remember when you guys came to the room, Nicholas was so upset that she was a girl. Oh my God. <laughs> he cried. He was not happy. <laughs> and I I apologized. <laughs> what was the name if I were a boy? Dante. Dante Basiglio. Dante, because Dante's Inferno, he was reading very the popular book at the time. I woke up, I remember having Karina and you guys, I, I remember this so vividly. I, I was having a dream that my water broke and I woke uh-huh. up from my dream and my water actually did break. I went to the bathroom and it kept going. And um, I just remember being really scared and 
you guys both told me you can do it, mom. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going <laughs> to, I've got to, I can't back down now. <laughs> so I said, when I come back, I'll have a baby. It was an experience taking care of everybody, going to the grocery store. You guys were so helpful. Every Friday, we'd go to the grocery store. You and Nicholas would push her around in the cart with her in it, and we'd fill up her cart, and we'd fill up another cart, and we every Friday we did this. It was it was incredible, but it was a team effort. I mean, and as a family, it is teamwork, and that and, and it's very important to have teamwork as a family. And I moved here to Arizona. In you and Papa were married. You guys were married how long? You and Papa From- were married. Five till I think 1991 was when our divorce was final. But you were together for almost 10 years. Being divorced and having a family, you have to put the kids first. I know a lot of people don't, but things work much better if you put the kids first. And yeah. things worked out and we stayed in touch. I mean, I, I love you guys. You're still my girls and at all the wedding you came to all the weddings I came to all the weddings I am remarried now to a wonderful guy Bob Tetzloff and and Daddy Daddy Bob Bob. and we are going to celebrate our 10-year anniversary when our dad died he was engaged again to a wonderful woman named Claudia yes and Claudia and my mom became very good friends and Claudia came to my mom's wedding yeah I think we've done a really good job of maintaining this blended family scenario even when divorces happen and different relationships I mean we really have maintained for a long time I think there were you know Obviously, if you're going through a divorce, not everything is bright and shiny. No. Yeah. Um, but you know, from the child's perspective, especially because, you know, I was leaving my brother and sisters and my dad and went with my mom to a different state. There was a lot of communication that had to happen. There was a lot of planning, a lot of I I plane rides. a lot of plane rides. I yeah. never, ever, ever felt like my dad didn't love me in any way, shape, or form because I moved with my mom. And, you know, it, there there were just a lot of dynamics there that, and then spending a lot of years away from my siblings again, like that's hard too. So there were a lot of times where like it could have gone where we weren't close or, you know, didn't have the relationship that we do. But because again, perseverance, communication. And the dedication of our family at the forefront. Family is important. I think and you and Papa, yeah. you were dedicated to the uh, mm-hmm. the commitment and the, the calendar, the cycle of visits. And like, mm-hmm. it was very, it was so consistent. You and Papa in your marriage and outside of your marriage dealt with a lot of adversity, right? And like you to the theme of this, sh- this show is pushing forward, pushing through it right. um, to get to the other side of hope. A lot of people can get stuck at the point of adversity and not know how to push through fear and just keep going because there's always another side of it when you get through. So I think that that's a really useful special, wonderful story to share that has multi layers. I mean, my gosh, are we missing anything before we leave? There is something that I wanted to say how proud I was of you when uh, after you guys uh, moved to go up north to go to school and and you were a waitress down, um, of course, Orange County, but the first and only time I was served by um, a a waitress with a disability was you and I was (laughs) so how you could wheel your wheelchair and hold a big old tray and do it with ease. You you got good tips. Yeah, I did get good tips. You really I did, did good. good. But I was so impressed with you because that's not easy to do when you're able-bodied. And you did it from a wheelchair. I just... Those lessons come from the, uh, lessons. the lessons of my many parents, right? It started with my mom and dad. And then it was you and my dad and my granny and my Aunt Mary. And then it was additional women. And, you know, Papa pushed me, he only adapted what was necessary. And he pushed me to figure things out on my own to make it happen if there, if there wasn't a way. So, you know, a lot of that comes from the lessons of growing up of you got this, go do it. 
You can do it. And you always have to believe in yourself. That's a very important thing. Everybody had a job and, and you included, you were not treated differently. And I think that's something that parents need to know. You you didn't want to be treated differently and you weren't. And so you had your jobs too. Everybody had jobs. It's a family thing. And I think that's, what's important to know that it's, it's family. I still want to hear Alicia's favorite memory with mom. In the theme of honoring George Michael and his sex tour, which was my very first concert that my mother, stepmother took me on. George Michael, we went and we loved it, right? We were like sixth grade and you let us bring our best friend. I think Becky came with us. Did she come with us or was it just, maybe she didn't come with us. She was spending the night one night. And of course, after we went to the George Michael concert, we were blasting him in the house all day and all night. (laughs) And yeah. you started sexy dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like my favorite memories of you and our, our, us, me growing up with you is you gifting Regina and I, those first experiences of concerts and doing our hair and going shopping at Mervyn's and trying on shoes and, you know, just like, yeah, like the eighties hair and just like you taught us how to like grow from little girls into adolescence. And um, so I have a lot of those like first little, like, Oh my gosh, I remember when we did that. And so I'm, I love you. It was, it, I'm so grateful I for everything that you, yeah. you gave to us oh, gifts, yeah. gifts. So I'm going to give both of you a chance to give some last minute inspiration to the audience. I think about my mom a lot and she would say things like, if you're if you're going to do the job, do it right or don't do it at all. I think that's really good advice. I, I do. It. I like that, mom. I think for me, I think, you know, this is something that my mom has always said, where you really have to be your own advocate and advocating for a child is um, even more important because your voice is their voice until they can have their own voice. And so um, I think if anything this last year has taught me is to never give up one foot in front of the other and keep advocating. You have to use your voice because you're your own best advocate, especially in the medical field. I love this conversation so much. I love you too very much. Thank you to everyone out there who decided to listen in to our family history and our beautiful story. This is Pushing Forward with Alicia, and that is how we roll. See you next time. If you're an employer who would like to learn more about disability inclusion in the workplace, lessons on ableism, and how accessibility can drive innovation in your company, please check out my micro training series at aliciaanderson.com. That's A-L-Y-C-I-A Anderson with an O dot com. Click on micro learning.